Hey guys, this is Jesse here from SkySoup. Today is just going to be a quick video talking about some theory behind the quick design whole group capacity calculators that exist for the Australian standard, um, the European standard, as well as the American AISC 360 standard. So all these calculators, despite the fact they're from different standards, they use the same kind of theory for distributing forces, um, these design loads on the bulk group and distributing those onto the forces on the individual bolts within the group. So the way that these forces get distributed is for in for in plane forces here we've got fy fx and mz these get distributed into shift forces on the bulk group whereas the remaining forces get distributed into tension forces on individual bolts from the bulk group so first of all let's talk about these in plane forces so for fy and fx the way these get distributed is quite simple it's just they get distributed um evenly amongst the bolts so for example for a force of 60 kilonewtons the resistance force is going to be 10 kilonewtons about uh, about 10 kilonewtons on each bolt. Um, and similarly, if we had a force of, say, 30 kilonewtons acting upwards, we're going to have a force of 5 kilonewtons acting down uh, on each of the bolts. And then we could, you know, work out the results as to say we had a 5 kilonewton force here, then we get some resultant acting on the bolt that looks like this. So those two forces are quite straightforward and it's quite easy to, and there's no debate or different methods on how to calculate how this force get results. But for the torsion force, the moment about Z, there are two different ways that we could calculate um, how this force gets distributed to the bolts. The first is the instantaneous sensor of rotation method, which is more accurate, but it requires an iterative solution. And then there's also the linear elastic method, which is uh, very fundamentally based, very straightforward to understand, um, but it's a little bit conservative compared to the instantaneous sensor of rotation method. So for the bolt group capacity calculator, we've used the linear, linear elastic method um, just to keep it clean, straightforward, and consistent, and easy for you to understand. So, for the linear elastic method uh, for a torsion force like this, what we're going to see is we're going to assume that the rotation is about the centroid point here, um, and we take a lever arm from the centroid to each bolt like that. And so the force that each bolt takes is going to be perpendicular to the centroid, uh, perpendicular to the lever arm, and the force on it is very proportional to the distance from the centroid. So this bolt here, which is further out, is going to have a higher force on it than this bolt here, which is closer. And as we work around, we're going to have different directions for the forces, like so, based on where they are in relation to the centroid here. And what we'll see is we'll see that the highest forces are on the corner bolts because they're furthest from the centroid. And depending on the force we have in the X and Y direction, is going to affect which one of these becomes the critical bolt. I would expect that, given some X and some Y force, one of these um, is going to be more critical than the others. So that's how we can distribute the forces uh, for the in-plane loading. For the out-of-plane loading, we have um, moment about Y, moment about X, and our force in the Z direction. Just like before, distributing our force in the Z direction is quite straightforward to distributing our other forces we had. We just distribute it evenly amongst the bolts. So for the force in Z, if we had a tension force of 60 kilonewtons, that's going to get resolved into uh, you know, 10 kilonewtons on each of the bolts. For moments, it's a bit less straightforward to understand. So if we had a moment about our y-axis, like so, what we can do is we can consider a section through this plate. So it might look like this. With our bolts here, here, here. And from this moment, what we'd expect is we'd expect a rotation. So the plate looks something like that. So these bolts here, these are going to take tension. These bolts in the middle aren't really going to move much at all. And the bolts on the other side are going to take compression. So we've got tension, tension, compression, compression. So here, this is just using linear elastic theory. Again, we're assuming that we're rotating about this centroid here, or the neutral axis here. And the forces that we take are proportional to our distance on the centroid. Now, this is only one of three methods we might use. So another method is, again, the instantaneous sensor of rotation method, where we're assuming that we're not necessarily rotating about the centroid, and we do a bit more of rigorous calculations to work out where we're going to be rotating about. So the rotation point's going to move to the side here, and now suddenly these guys are taking more attention. So this, these bolts here, um, let me change my color. These bolts here are taking some tension, some tension, and there's a bit more load sharing here. So between these four bolts, we're taking tension, whereas before we're only taking it between two. And so that's going to help us to reduce the load on these bolts. So another method um, 
is the plastic uh, the plastic method, which is available in the store. Um, this still assumes that we're rotating about the center right here. But the difference is the way that this um, this deflection kind of is assumed to look. So I need to draw a few more bolts here. So we can kind of capture this example. So I'm going to draw, pretend we have some bolts here, 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 and here. And our diagram now looks something like that at the moment. So with the plastic analysis method, um, what we're considering is we're considering that the plate, the deformation is going to look something more like this. It's a bit, a bit off on that line, but something like this. So the plate's going to deform a lot in the center, and then at the end, what we're going to see is we're going to see that all these bolts are kind of equally sharing the load, equally sharing the load. And if the bolts are equally sharing the load, um, it means that effectively we're going to have a lower critical um, force on the bolt group. So we're going to have all these bolts here, um, sharing a load, the bolt in the center here taking nothing, and the bolts on the in the pressure side also sharing uh, an equal loads. So, for example, for this theory, if before we had you no know, force of, good numbers, if we had a force of ten kilonewtons here and five kilonewtons here in some previous example um, for a linear elastic. Now, what this is going to change to is it's going to change to an equal force of 7.5 kilonewtons on each bolt. And what that means is we've effectively lowered the critical force from 10 kilonewtons to 7.5 kilonewtons, and that's going to help us a lot in our design. So the strain standard does allow for elastic or plastic analysis, but it doesn't give any guidance on when to uh, when this might be um, applied. For the European standard, the European standard itself does give much guidance, but there's uh, the British Annex gives some guidance on when plastic distribution might be applied. And for the AISC, the steel manual um, suggests that the plastic distribution might always be used because it's less conservative than the instantaneous center of rotation at steel, or it gives lower values than the instantaneous center of rotation, which might be a more realistic um, value. So that's the main theory behind how you can distribute loads um, onto this bulk group. If you have any questions about this, feel free to drop a chat. I drop a message in the chat here, or if you're just interested in playing around with the tool, I just recommend to uh, run over some numbers and put them in yourself, generate a report, and see what the forces look like um, on the individual bolts. And you'll see some equations here, which is the equations that actually get used for these linear, linear elastic methods. Um, or equivalently, if we change this here to plastic, we get a plastic distribution like we were just talking about for the out of plane forces.